Hello, my friends. This is Andy coming to you live from Southern California. It looks like I got my internet woes worked out this morning. I was on a Zoom call with a mastermind group that I'm on, uh, that I uh, run with uh, with another friend of mine, and um, nothing was working. I don't know if it was Zoom or what, but everything looks everything looks fine here. Thank goodness. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be talking about screaming, cussing, looting, burning, uh, waffling, and um, changing the rules, um, which is um, apparently. A, a liberal Democrat thing <laughs> to do, and uh, we've been doing, but uh, we've been doing nothing. We've been doing nothing. Was that a good sentence? I've heard nothing but whining and crying uh, since the other day. Uh, the debates, and again, were they perfect? No. Did everybody get to say what they wanted to say? Probably not. Um, was uh, Chris Wallace one of the worst moderators uh, ever for debates? Yes, um, but uh, just the whining and crying and the woe is me, we're changing the rules. And it just reminds me of so many things that I have experienced in my life that, um, you know, there's just a lot of whiners and, and fearful, fearful people. And apparently it's just a left thing uh, because uh, I was telling somebody the other day that I uh, was in this uh, riot situation on Saturday against uh, Black Lives Matter and Atifa. And the people that were wearing American flags and American apparel and that kind of stuff, very strong, motivated, and, and for the, even happy. <laughs> While we were chasing a Black Lives Matter and Antifa out of our city, we were all having a really good time, and they were not. They were angry, screaming, yelling in my face, telling me to say p- stupid people's names who are drug dealers that that get themselves killed by hanging around the wrong people. And um, and uh, and it, but it just it, that seems to be the theme with the left, right? With the Democrats, is that they just they want to scream and, and cuss at you. They flip off, you know, 78, 70 to eighty year old people that are w- trying to, you know, have dinner and cuss at them, and uh, you know, say they want to rape their their wives and just miserable, horrible people. And uh, we continue to see it. And the and the uh, media is obviously they're liberal uh, are exactly the same way, and. Um, I, I don't know if there's ever anything we're going to be able to do about it. Uh, the only thing we can do is make sure and vote. And uh, one thing I haven't mentioned lately, and that is that we need, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to find, <laughs> as I'm talking, I'm trying to find uh, my sponsors, which I'm going to address here in one second. But um, uh, one thing I want to address, that we have to vote, all of us that are Americans and have common sense, we need to all vote uh, Republican all the way down the line. It's really important that we do uh, because it may not um, you know, it may be too close to call in the presidential race. It's possible. I doubt it, but I, it's possible. But if it is, we need to have every representative um, that we can possibly have on the Republican side to help us do that within each state because of the way things work and the laws and what, you know, what has to happen when there's a tie or when there's a question. And uh, each state then will have a certain amount of representatives that will be able to vote for the president. And we need to vote all the way down Republican lines. All right, so really quick, let me just get through a couple of our sponsors. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about todayshappycoffee.com. Go to todayshappycoffee.com. Where is it? There it is. Um, we have uh, 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 Georgia Peach Georgia Peach Tea, which is fantastic. That's what I just got done drinking in the, in the bottle I just finished. Uh, we have a Zest, which is a lemonade. We have coffee, of course, because that's why it's called today's happycoffee.com. And then we have the new uh, Elevate Max, which is a, a energy booster and an appetite suppressant, which almost works too good, <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that. Um, and it is really good. You just got to met, you got to pick one or two. I have uh, over the last, I don't know, three months or so, I've been taking everything, right? I drink coffee in the morning. I take in, uh, a bottle of uh, the the zest or the peach tea with me to the gym. I, I've been taking uh, one or two of these little capsules. And um, coincidentally, now I cannot say that this has cured me. I can't, I can't make any claims. It's just an FDA uh, thing. Uh, and that is, um, I've, I've had high blood pressure for most of my adult life. Uh, even prior to my adult life, I think I probably had high blood, blood pressure in high school, um, but it runs in the family. We've all had uh, high blood pressure. Um, and so I almost didn't get onto the police department because of my blood pressure. I, I had to lay down in dark rooms, both for LAPD, Anaheim, LA County Sheriff when I was testing. Um, they had me go lay down 
in a quiet, dark room so that my blood pressure would get low enough so I could pass the physical test and, and just to continue on to the testing process. It happened on, on in every one of those tests that I took. <clears throat> so I, and that was, a, you know, I was 21, 22 years of age. And so I've always had it. Well, the other day um, I had, well, I, there was a couple of days where I was like a little dizzy, a little lightheaded, and I'm on uh, some high blood pressure medication that I'm kind of, uh, you know, they just boosted it up a little bit. Well, I had lost 20 pounds because uh, at the time I was taking these products, the appetite suppressant, I lost about 20 pounds um, and and in and, and a very short a period of time. So like in about two and a half months, I lost 20 pounds. Um, and so based on still taking the same amount of medication for high blood pressure and losing the 20 pounds and also these things kind of calm you down and make you kind of happy and not stressed out. Um, uh, my blood pressure had dropped to such a level that they said, oh my gosh, your, your, your blood pressure is so low. You got to stop taking the medication. So I'm not taking medication right now because my blood pressure is so low. And that's actually a good thing, right? If I can now keep it at a balance, that's actually really good. Again, I can't make any claims. I can just tell you, uh, coincidentally, when I started taking these products, uh, that kind of thing happened. I also take CBD from today's CBD oil. Hold on one second. Where is it? There it is. Today, CBDoil.com. Go there for Viseo. Viseo is one of the top 50 healthcare companies in the world. It has liposome technology. It's patented. It's fantastic, um, uh, fantastic product. And then we have today's Viseo.com, which is the rest of the Viseo products. Uh, we have here, we have a new protein shake that just came out. Uh, we have chocolate and vanilla. The chocolate is, hold on here, is, is, is plant-based vegan. And I'm not sure if it's the whey formula. Shoot, I should know this stuff. <laughs> the vanilla is one. One of them's whey and one of them's vegan. Maybe this is that. This is the vegan one. Uh, but they're both both fantastic. I love them. It's a great um, uh, meal replacement and uh, some really good protein there. Gosh darn it, I, I don't have the lid all the way on, and I've been splashing water everywhere. All right, so those are are the uh, sponsors that I want to talk to you about. I also met with a new uh, dog food company. You're going to be hearing this is the article that they're in uh, about this new dog food product. It is it is essentially raw food, but in a kibble and a can uh, format. It's they're a great company. I I go way back with uh, some of the people that are in the in the company. I know them. I trust them. I've looked at the formulations. I've looked at everything. This is all their information and all the formulas. I spent about three hours uh, today discussing. Uh, one of the great uh, products is a uh, almost a vegan um, uh, a type of dog food. And I know that sounds really strange for dog food, but there's some people out there that want, <laughs> want to go vegan, but it's made out of eggs. It's made out of chicken eggs. Uh, and so it is before actually the living thing actually becomes a living thing. It's the egg part without the, um, without the chicken in it. And so it's, but I'll, I'll talk more about that later, but probably more on the Falco canine dog talk uh, uh, process. All right. Oh, I got somebody with trying to ads. Send me an ad on Twitch. Hey, get off of here. What are you doing? Hey, I mean, I see it. My producer. Hey, Jefferson, nice to see you. Um, do you still have to stop drinking alcohol? I'll ask you for it. But no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I had my, I was going to have my whiskey over here. I didn't, I started my show and forgot I was going to have a bottle of whiskey over here because I know at the end of the show, I'm going to have to take a shot of whiskey because when we have screaming, cussing, looting, burning, waffling people in our life, it drives us crazy. It really is kind of sad when you, when you look at what they hate about Trump, I think in a lot of ways, not only is he exposing the morons uh, uh, that uh, are not only in the Democratic Party, I've been saying this a lot, we have some morons in the Republican Party too. He's exposing both of them, like Mitt, Mittens, right? Mittens Romney um, is a moron and a Republican. We can't, we don't like him. Uh, there's some other Republicans that are on one day, I kind of like him. On another day, I really don't like him that much. Uh, and so there's a few of those, but they're being exposed and they're having to try to choose a side. You got to choose a side, right? Either you got Republicans, which are rhinos that are going to the other side, which is perfectly fine. Get out of our party. We don't like you. We've had enough of you uh, because you're a waffler, right? When you're a waffler, you're a Democrat. When you're a looter, you're a Democrat. When you're destroying buildings, you're a Democrat. When you're screaming and yelling at people's faces and calling them uh, the F word and um, uh, flipping them off and, and say my name or say somebody else's name, whatever it is you're screaming and you are a terrorist. You obviously are a Democrat. You're no longer American. And um, these are the people that are trying to destroy our country. And we're seeing it. The reason people have been screaming and yelling so much over the last couple of days since the debate isn't because you had two grown men <laughs> yelling and screaming at each other. We knew that was going to happen. Right. We already knew everybody was not everybody because they didn't not. I think there's a lot of people that didn't watch because they knew what it was going to be. Right. They it was going to be two old men uh, yelling at each other. Um, but uh, the one thing is Donald Trump didn't waver from anything. He never wavered from, you know, wanting to build a wall, 
to uh, not giving money to illegal aliens, to um, uh, uh, he's for fracking, um, he's for the economy, he's for lower taxes, he's for um, uh, uh, creating opportunity zones for the black community, he's for school choice for the black community, he's for um, you know funding of um, uh, of black uh, historically black colleges and universities, he's for a whole bunch of things for the black community, and he's never wavered from that. There's no waffling, right? He stays, uh, there's no, nothing changed. Nothing. Nothing was going to change from the, uh, the, uh, from the debates. But the thing that did change is everything on Biden's side, right? I mean, we already knew he was waffling on the uh, fracking, right? He was all against, we're not fracking. We're not freaking fracking, right? We're not going to do it. Don't worry. And he grabbed the little girl. He had an excuse to touch the girl. Remember, do you remember that video? He touched the girl and we're not going to do any fracking. Don't have to worry about that, right? And he did that. And then just the other day, he says, uh, no, I'm for fracking. <laughs> what? What? Uh, are you going to load the Supreme Court with a bunch of uh, the liberals? Are you going to load them up? He goes, I'm, why would I tell you that? Why would I tell you, uh, um, you know, uh, an issue? Why would, I, what, why would I choose a side of an issue? Because I can't, because he can't choose a side. Right? I mean, this is the craziest thing, right? You heard Nancy and you heard Schumer, the people that are actually part of the people pulling the strings besides AOC and Bernie and uh, Elon and Mohan, whatever her name is, you know, that, that chick um, who um, was paying people to turn in ballots, that girl. Um, you know, those are the, the ones you know holding the strings of Biden. And they're going, hey, no, no, we are going to load uh, the Supreme Court. And he's going, well, I don't want to tell you that because that's going to be, you're going to then talk all about it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what we do when you take a stupid side of, a, of an issue as is we're going to talk about it. At some point, you're going to talk about it because the people that are running you are going to tell you to begin talking about it. And they, um, they, he brought up um, about the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is really good. It's not going to cost us trillions. As a matter of fact, that's going to save us money. Oh, you're for the Green New Deal? No, I'm not for the Green New Deal. And so you see, they, they, they start this whole waffling thing. Right. And do they does he uh, put down any of the writing? No, there's no writing. Let, let's uh, take a look at this writing and see uh, this thing and why they're making such a big deal about the white supremacist thing. That is one of the dumbest things that uh, we have seen. Right. The, the left talking about the white supremacist thing. Hold on. I got to get this all set up. I didn't do that ahead of time. I was running a little behind. I'm so oops. <laughs> what? What just happened? Hold on. I'm going to bring it back. Stand by. <clears throat> and you think I had some whiskey? I've not had any whiskey yet. As a matter, maybe while this video is running, I will uh, I will have a shot of whiskey or go get some whiskey. Um, but uh, we're going to show a little video. Uh, remember that the big deal today, the big deal today is that uh, Donald Trump didn't firmly enough for the fiftieth time say that he was against white supremacist. Uh, it might have been fifty two times. I forget how many times he said that he's against white supremacist. And then, as a matter of fact, he's putting to death or, or for putting to death a white supremacist. He's uh, he's uh, um, uh, he said that he's in, uh, against uh, the KKK. He's the I mean, I don't know how many different times he needs to say it. Even you got Fo a Fox reporter that John, whatever his name is, I think. What a dipwit. It, she said, there, he said a like hundred times that he's, he's against white supremacy. But yet this is what they want to do, right? They really want, they want to scream and yell and cuss. And they, they want to say that BLM isn't happening. And Antifa is a thought or a, 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 a message, not a thing, right? And yet... We've seen that it's a thing. We've seen it's a thing. And so all they want to do is talk about this white supremacy thing that he's talked about 50 times, if not more. And, and they don't give it up. And they want it to make this huge thing that he's a white supremacist and a racist, which we all know he's not. I just told you all the thing he does for the black community. But yet they want to do this thing where they're trying to say that he's a white supremacist. And they want to somehow make turn this whole debate thing about him not saying that he was against white supremacy like i've said it what do you want me to say sure i'm against it like I, you don't believe me when i when i say i'm against it you, you don't believe me when i say i'm putting a kk member or a white supremacist to death um you don't believe me when i when i'm really strong on it so sure whatever who do you want me to name <laughs> give me a name i'm against them just give me somebody i'm against them that's not never good enough all right so let's go ahead and let's see well, why? It's because our city has looked like this over the last several years, or last, last several months. I'm sorry. I exaggerated.
garbage is still being called peaceful protests. Remember, it's nothing to do with George Floyd anymore. It ain't about Black Lives Matter. It's about flipping over the system. These are the officers who are being assaulted, injured as a result of having to deal with this human garbage. Roll that tape from Flatbush when NYPD says that this orderly group attacked officers and their vehicle. They're looking for the men. They say we're throwing rocks, bottles, and you see a cone thrown and other items in the vehicle striking those officers. In another case, they released images of a man who threw a brick at an officer's helmet. NYPD vowing to hold their officers accountable, but saying they want to make sure that people understand what officers are contending with. Make no mistake, the crazies here want this stuff to happen here. That's why we need to follow the law and stop things that are unlawful. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and so this is, and the reason I chose that video, I could have chose 100 videos. I mean, there's a bunch of videos. I could have gone to Fox News. I could have gone to another place. But I, I chose this guy because he's, I think he's from Australia. If I'm not, not mistaken, I should have made sure because it says dot AU uh, at the top there. So I'm assuming it's Australia, but he's, he's from Australia saying these guys are crazy. <laughs> these guys are lunatics. This is, or any of those people look like white supremacists to you. I thought, saw an awful lot of black people and white people, like all mixed together, all the same people, the people that I was confronted with just the other day on Saturday, I was in the middle of these morons. A bunch of black people, Mexican people, and white people, all dressed in black, all holding signs that said BLM or uh, 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 Breonna Taylor or George Floyd or Antifa. One of them, a black girl, got into a car from Long Beach and drove over four people and put two people in the hospital. She was arrested for attempted murder. None of those people were white supremacists. But somehow, all day long... It was all about Donald Trump not saying, you know, whatever it was that they want. I don't even know what they wanted him to say. They wanted him to um, say that he didn't like white supremacists, which he said uh, hundreds of times. I don't know how many times that, but it's a lot. I mean, uh, enough to where you say, well, how many times do you want me to say it? It doesn't make any sense. But it's, that's how they want. They want to change the, the, the narrative, right? That, the, but what about everything else that's been going on? I, I've not seen one that I know of. Now, it's, it's possible. I have not seen one white supremacist group, even these this, these people. What are they called again? The something boys? I don't even know who they are. The Proud Boys, I think they're called. Amy knows. Amy, tell me who they are. The Proud, Yeah, the Proud Boys. So the Proud Boys, I, we didn't even know. Amy and, and I talked, and, and I also talked to a couple other people. Do you, who are the Proud Boys? I don't know. <laughs> like, how, the, Donald Trump is probably going, okay, I'm against the Proud Boys. And then who are the Proud I don't even know who the Proud Boys are. It was like, this is the dumbest thing that they focused on. But you see how they work. Do you see how they work in, in every way? That nothing, nothing was going to come out of this debate other than, and who nobody, I, I don't care about it. I don't care about how anybody feels. I don't care about uh, people from other countries, you know, coming on my show and telling me that I'm an idiot or a more. I don't care because I could, I see with my own eyes. The stupidity of the Democrats and liberals who are against the United States of America, who are, have become the enemy of America, of the United States of America. Clearly, they have become the enemy because they do not like any American. They don't like anybody who loves America. They don't like anybody who loves freedom. They don't love anybody who loves um, uh, a conservative thought whatsoever. Right? They, they don't want our churches open. Uh, they don't, uh, you know, they, 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 they just simply are against anybody that's making money as, as a small business owner. They're obviously for the big business, right? They're obviously for Amazon. They're obviously for Facebook. They're obviously for Twitter. They're obviously for, um, who else am I leaving out? Um, uh, um, Walmart, right? They're obviously for these big companies. These are the companies that are surviving, right? We can all go to those and the pot stores. We can go to those. But we can't open up the small business owners, the restaurant owners, right? The little gym owners. We can't open them up. You can't, uh, you, you, you can't, um, you know, uh, fully open um, uh, many other of the smaller um, uh, venues like bar bars. I, that was the thing I was looking for, like bars and, and, and taverns and things like that so people can gather. We can't do that. But you can go to a pot store. Um, I had to go buy some pot the other day because I'm training a narcotics detection dog. And it was full of people. Full. But they don't want us to go vote either. They want to do mail-in uh, voting. <laughs> but you can go buy pot in a little tiny store. That's okay, right? You can go to Target. You can go to the mall to the to, again to the big. 
big stores. That's okay. But don't worry about the little guy, right? Don't worry, worry about all of us that have businesses to run that we can't run because of your stupidity. You got, they're, they're just simply against America. There is no doubt in my mind. And I have been saying this for several months. And I think early on people go, oh, that's a little strong that you're saying it's Americans versus Democrats. It is Americans versus Democrats. Uh, it, it, if you don't, if you're not with me, if you don't understand that by now, then, um, I've not gonna, done a good job of, uh, of, of showing you how this all works. Now, Ma has a lot to say here. I hope the house is voted out. Me too. Uh, they have treated Americans horrible. Um, and Nancy Pelosi and her, yeah, she's a, just a, she's, she's, I think it got as much d- dementia as, uh, as Joe Biden. It's a little crazy. Uh, she was, uh, she uh, did, did it get, uh, did it get just, uh, shut down again today? I, I haven't paid attention to that part. I had a meeting today with the dog food company, so I don't know how that all ended up, uh, denying to make Trump look bad. Yes, absolutely. They are afraid, of, uh, uh, our thoughts, uh, odd thoughts, uh, OD thoughts. <laughs> Amazing. Have to have some puzzles still. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and, um, and and then so now they want to change the rules. So, so this is the last thing, and I'm this is gonna, I'm going to try to make this short. And I know I was saying, oh, I didn't go get the tequila, the, uh, the you're going to allow me to go get some whiskey because I need to have a shot after this whole thing. So um, you you have them now wanting to change the rules. Right. They first are kind of saying they're trying to convince everybody that Biden won the debate, which we all know is not true because he waffled. Again, you you didn't win when you're changing your views because you think that now you got to somehow make yourself stronger by not going with the people that actually voted you and and made you the nominee. Like the people that made you the nominee want you to be for the Green Deal, the Green New Deal, whatever that's called. They, They want you to be for open borders. They want you to be for defunding the police. They want you to be for BLM and Antifa. They want you to be for all those things. But now that you're on a debate debate stand and you're against Donald Trump, now you're going to say, oh, I'm not for the Green New Deal. I, you're a white supremacist. Uh, and begin to do this. You don't win when you can't stick, stick with, your, with your party that got you nominated. That's not a win. That's you changing because you think it's, it's better for you in the long run if you start to change. But what happens is, and I hope the Democrats that are still kind of on the fence understand, who are you going to vote for? If you are against fracking and now he says he's for fracking, now that is not, not, did he not lie to you and you're still going to vote for him? That's okay with you? Um, when, when he says uh, Donald Trump is a Russian spy and that he was colluding with the Russians, but yet you're finding out that actually it was Hillary Clinton who was <laughs> colluding with the Russians, you're going, oh, well, that's okay. I'm still going to vote for him. But wait a minute. You were for him when he was, when, when you thought that Trump was a Russian spy, but now that he's not, now that you're finding out that he's not a Russian spy, now you're still not going to vote for him. So th- what's, what side are you on? Like I, none of it makes any sense. So, so now that you thought that he won, now you want to change the rules. Why do you want to change the rules if you thought he won? Right? This reminds me of, of what they want to do in all sports with, with kids, right? Everybody wins a trophy. We don't want, oh, Jimmy's a loser. He can't be a loser. Let's change the rules. Let's, let's make sure that everybody wins. No, that's a horrible idea. No, when you, you, you learn from losing, you learn from getting your ass kicked once in a while, and that's how you become stronger. You build no men in this world if you allow every man to win, regardless of what a pussy they are in whatever sports they're playing. They don't learn to be tougher. They don't learn to get stronger. They don't learn to become faster. You can learn to become faster. You you exercise. You um, uh, do leg lifts, and you do leg extensions, and you do sprinting, uh, pulling a parachute. You you build the muscle to do it, and the only reason you're going to do that is because you're a loser. Right when you lose, you don't like losing. Become a winner. This is ridiculous. And then you change the rules. I remember going to the academy. When I went to the academy, the, the fence, the, the wall you had to go over uh, and sometimes throw like a, a bag over the top of it was six foot high, right? So you run to the six foot wall and you got to fit. You're exhausted because you just got through doing a hundred pushups. You got done doing, I don't know how many jumping jacks and then running around the track for a little while. And then you're confronted with a six foot wall and you got to take a, a, a um, uh, you know, a dummy of some sort, uh, and you throw the dummy over, and now you have to jump over. Well, once they realize that, well, we're having okay. Now, women, please don't be upset at me. Please, I'm I'm just telling you what I learned in the academy. Once we had a couple of women, and even a couple of guys, even a couple of guys that they got to that six foot, they couldn't get over it. They go, well, maybe we should lower it. 
and we're going, Lauren, <laughs> how about how about they get some upper body strength? How about you teach them how to get upper body strength and you go through some weight training and you teach them how to do proper push-ups and you teach them how to nego- how to navigate a wall because you don't always have to have that much strength to go. You have to have sometimes technique also. How about teaching them how to do that? Lower the wall. When was the last time somebody somebody chased, chased a bad guy through the backyards of, of, of whatever city you're working in, in the middle of the night being chased by, by um, um, uh, you know, uh, somebody's dog that's in the backyard? And, the, and then you got to the wall. You said, you know, do you know I'm – I can't go over six ball. Can you lower? <laughs> Homeowner, do you have one of those things that lowers your wall? Because I can't get over your six foot wall. I need you to lower your, your six foot wall down to five feet because I can only get over a five foot wall. No, that never happens. That never happens. Though you're confronted with what you're confronted with. So you go in the academy, they're lowering the wall because you have a bunch of people that are in the academy that shouldn't be in the academy. That really is the bottom line. You don't lower the standards because you're you you can't do it. You you find a different line of work. If if you can't become president of the United States and put up with somebody arguing with you and you lose it and you get angry and you tell them to shut up and you call them a clown and you lose your train of thought and you begin waffling and changing your mind, you don't go. You know what? We should need to change the rules because you know um, that wasn't fair. That wasn't fair that he argued with me and then made me say it wasn't for the New Green Deal when I actually am supposed to be for the New Green Deal. But I forgot that I was I, I got flustered. So we need to change the rules. Right. When you're when you're uh, confronted with some dictator in another country, you go to him and say, you know what? I'm not Trump. I'm Biden. So be nicer to me because I get my feelings hurt and I don't know how to argue when somebody argues back or or confronts me with, you know, we're going to put some tariffs on your on your country. Oh, no, don't do that. It's not fair. I'm not Donald Trump. I don't know how to argue. So can we change the rules? <laughs> no, no, you don't change the rules because you're a loser. You, you just learn how to be better or you find a different line of work. That's the way that it is. It was. It, this is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. And if you're a winner, if you actually won the debate, then why are you changing the rules? And you're going to have, well, I need somebody to mute the mic when he starts yelling. Because when he starts yelling, it hurts my feelings. Oh, you freaking people. You guys are nuts. Really are, are super freaking nuts. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm exhausted. I need a drink. <laughs> All right, let me just bring you to this federalist thing. And so let's go back. And I, and I actually meant to go this earlier and I got ahead of myself. But let's just go back. When when they're sitting there talking about how horrible um, uh, the, the white supremacists are and the KKK are in the United States, which, again, I look around like, I don't know even know what they're talking about. What are the Proud Boys doing? <laughs> what are you talking about? Why is this even a discussion? It, why, is, why is Kaylee McEnany going, are you people, she, you know she wants to say the F word so bad. I, I, I said that today that I just I could see it in her, in her face like I'm a Christian and I've been really nice over the last several months. But I want to say F you right now. You guys are idiots. Like, what does this have to do with anything that's happening in our country right now? Like, who are the freaking we didn't even know what the Proud Boys were. Like, this is the, the, this is the really the dumbest day in the press room, and they've had a lot of dumb days, don't get me wrong, but this is one of the dumbest days I've ever seen in the press room. But why is that? Well, I'm going to show you why that is right now. I'm going to share with you this thing, and I'm trying to figure out, i got to figure out how to, I know what, I'll show you the rest of that video, because the rest of that video from, uh, again, I think it's from Australia, um, uh, is worth watching. It's not much longer. Hold on. I, I just, so this is, this is the reason why. So here's an article from The Federalist. Well, the Federalist. Blah, blah, blah. So here we go, the Federalist. And as we scroll down right here, it says study, study. Up to 95% of 2020 U.S. riots are linked to Black Lives Matter. What? Not the KKK? Not white supremacists? No. 95% of the 2020 U.S. riots are linked to Black Lives Matter. A report accompanying the data project, however, reads like an upscale attempt to blame the police for criminals' decisions to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> Read this thing. I'll put the links in the thing. Um, I don't, when did this come out? I don't know when this came out. September 16th. So contrary to corporate media narratives, up to 95% of the summer's riots are linked to Black Lives Matter activism, according to data collected by Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, ACLED. The data also shows... 
the data also show, I guess that's right, right? There's no S on it. Show that nearly 6% or more than 1 in 20 of U.S. protests between May 26th, September 5th involved, involved rioting, looting, and similar violence, including 47 fatalities. 47 fatalities from Black Lives Matter, not from KKK, not from white supremacists. ACLED is a nonprofit organization that tracks conflict across the globe. Its U.S. project that collected the uh, that collected the summer protest data is supported by Princeton University. The project's uh, spreadsheet co- uh, collated tens of thousands of data points, documents 12,045 incidents of U.S. U.S. civil unrest from May 26, 2020, to September 5, 2020. May 26 is the day uh, after George Floyd's death in police custody, and then, and it, with enough fentanyl in his system to have died of an overdose if police had never touched him. Oh, this is the, that's going to be our problem. All right. And I could go on. I mean, it really is a, um, a good report. Uh, when you, when you begin to read it, it is, uh, it is, um, just, uh, again, it just it explains to you. And I put it, I put the link to that article in the chat. So hopefully you'll see it. If you don't private message me and I'll send it to you, but it's from the federalist. Um, but man, am I heated right now? <laughs> Hold on. I got to see some of these things. I mean, just believe whatever. Uh, too many people just be- uh, believe whatever uh, the mainstream media tells them to believe. It is. That is for a fact. That is for fact. For real. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I agree with Valerie. Whatever Valerie's agreeing with me. Uh, what's up with calling Trump a bully? Even supporters. I know. Uh, it, it really is odd. They People get their, their panties in a bind, and they just really... Uh, that, oh, he's so harsh. Like we even, I, I'm telling you, we even have some pussies at the Republican Party. I'm sorry. I, I let me put up my disclaimer. I am so sorry. I didn't. I don't have my disclaimer. I'm. I am sorry if you have children listening. Um, and I didn't put up my disclaimer. But this, it's just so maddening, right? I don't under. I I just don't understand the hand ringers and the. Oh my gosh, he was so loud. He's loud. He's always been loud. It, this isn't new. But again, what I what I said yesterday, I don't even know if I was on. Yes, I was on yesterday. So yesterday, th- you have to also understand where this, uh, you know, some of this anger comes from. At some point, if, if for an entire four year period of time, again, longer than uh, than he's actually been president, that you had an entire. Uh, media organization, a, a party like the DNC and some of your own Republican Party uh, uh, members constantly railing against you every day, investigating you, um, uh, spying on you. You have people in the White House, which we've learned today. If you watch any of Dan, Dan Bongino's show or listen or watch any of Dan Bongino's shows, watch them over the last two days because they, they talk about the, the people that were letting in people to the White House to help spy on the administration, not just Donald Trump, but the people that were working within the administration. That you have this going on for over a four-year period of time, and at some point you're just going to say, okay, I got, I, I'm the only person, at least on that stage uh, uh, the other day, that he was the only person on stage that was going to get the word out on a number of issues that needed to be brought up. And he also was the only person that was going to ask Biden even a tough question. Not even Chris Wallace was going to ask Biden a tough question. We know that from the questions. Not one question was really tough against uh, Joe Biden. They didn't ask him anything about uh, Wallace didn't. didn't ask him about Hunter, Hunter Biden that I remember. He didn't ask him to um, uh, disavow uh, Black Lives Matter or disavow Antifa. Donald Trump did. And everybody wants to beat up on Donald Trump and say what a horrible person he is. Even Republicans and even Fox News um, uh, uh, reporters and personalities. But you got to understand who's going to do it. If Chris Wallace isn't going to do it in a debate and ask, and out of all the questions you asked Donald Trump, are you going to disavow white supremacists and KKK members? Oh, and and I would have done the same thing. I would have said, for what? I mean, I will, but for what? What have they done? Are they the ones that have been destroying the buildings and looting? And, and, and blinding cops with lasers and throwing bricks at their heads and throwing trash can lids at their heads and, and walking up to them and shooting them in the head as they were sitting in their police car. Was that, was that KKK? Was that Proud Boys? Was that white supremacist? Uh, I don't understand the question. What, what, that question comes out of like, why did you even ask that question? What is it about what's happening in our world today that has to do with that question? And so you, you, you're, you're conf- as a human being, you got to understand as a human being, you've been just, and you, and you, again, you're working for free. 
<laughs> you're working for free, taking all this shit every day, and you get asked a stupid question, you're going to say, yeah, sure. Like, what? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I've been doing it. over the last I've been telling you. What are you talking about? Uh, unlike this guy across from me who actually spoke at the funeral of the, of, of the leader of the KKK movement of, of his time, the, the guy over here, this Biden dude, he actually spoke at a KKK um, leader's funeral and said he was his really close friend. Him and Hillary were good friends with uh, the guy, uh, Bird or whatever. I think his name is Bird, right? They were, they were really good friends. What do, you, what do you mean me? Have you ever seen me uh, uh, speaking at a KKK member's funeral? <laughs> I'm putting a guy to death for committing a homicide who's a white supremacist KKK member. What? Well, what? Why? 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 Why are you coming after me? Uh, I mean, really, just kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm going to cuss. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm just so exhausted. I wasn't going to drink tonight, but I, I think I need to have a, a shot of whiskey. Pretend you're on the radio. <laughs> no, I'm at home. I'm at home. I can cuss when I'm at home. Uh, Wallace was, uh, cod- yes, definitely coddling him. Definitely. Cod- I don't know why my screen's so small today. They must have changed something because the the screen. Let me remove that and see if that makes it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, for whatever reason, it went to like a six font, uh, and I compared now even maybe in a four font. Um, he was debating two. Yeah, absolutely, Freddie. Thank you for uh, uh, coming in on that one. Yeah, definitely. He was debating two different people. And again, you have to understand the frustration. And he's been dealing with this frustration for a very long time. So it's it's almost turned into again. He's a loud. He's got a loud voice. He's a big guy. Um, he's um, he's a New Yorker. Um, and that's I, I've just dealt with a number of New Yorkers. And that's I mean, there's a there's a voice and a talk and a way that they carry themselves is just who they are. So he's always been that way. But now you add four years of being shit on on a daily basis, investigated on the media gives him no credit. He just got nominated for three different Nobel Peace Prize and they say nothing about it. And then you come on and ask him about him to um, to denounce white supremacists. Like, how about ask him, hey, how do you feel about, like, how about doing a Biden question? Like, how do you feel about being nominated for three P- uh, Nobel Peace Prize? How about that question? How about, hey, uh, you know, you uh, created one of the strongest economies in the country's history prior to the pandemic. Um, it, it's a really good thing you did that because during the pandemic, we had to shut down the entire economy. Thank God we were at a place that when you shut something like that down, we, we could have been a lot worse than it is right now. And it looks like the recovery is going to be much easier once we get everything back open. What is your comment about that? How about that kind of question? How about, hey, uh, Mr. President, you've done more for the black community than any other president, including the last black president we had. The last black pre- or the only black president we had did nothing for the black community. Um, uh, how was it that you came in as a white guy from New York, a business owner, and created more opportunity for black people? How about that question? But no, you have to ask them, uh, uh, can you denounce white supremacy? For what reason? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the proud, the proud boys. Who the hell for the proud, proud boy? I've never heard of those guys. I never heard of them. I had to look them up. I had to, I had to, I had to duck, duck, goose them. Um, really crazy. Thank you, Freddie, for that. Yes, absolutely. Hello, fellow Carol. Nice to see you. Must be cold. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, um, oh, wait. My nipple showing. <laughs> could be uh, <laughs> oh, oh my god freddy uh pretend it went, oh you already said that one sorry you already put that one up all right my friends hold on i'm gonna show you the rest of that video that way i can go get uh go get something here hold on i'm gonna show you. the rest of the video is actually pretty good this is, again this is a guy from australia and you know some people say you know people from other countries think we're crazy yes because we have democrats in our city in our country in our and our city <laughs> both um they do they say like well you got some crazy people some crazy liberals uh, in uh, your world over there. So let's why while you're watching the rest of this, I'm gonna go get uh, I'm gonna go get something. Hold on. But in the United States, they have politicians, including the mayor of the city that has the responsibility for the police that are being assaulted. Who do they decide to side with? Well, it won't surprise you when we press play on this. The president's actions clearly have escalated things in Seattle and across the country. I was just talking to a number of mayors throughout the country who saw a similar thing, that people wanting to act out against the president and his administration coming to the streets. 
I believe if you look at what happened yesterday and Sunday, again, it was peaceful. We had a number of peaceful protests. And what we've seen is every time this president promises to sow division, he's successful at it. And he has, he's clearly targeted cities run by Democratic mayors. He said so himself. He's using law enforcement as a political tool. I hate to say it, Aaron, but I really believe that we are seeing the dry run for martial law. Are you surprised this is the same person who referred to that city within the city that was set up by protesters a few weeks ago, the one where multiple people were being murdered as the summer of love? The police officers that implement the laws passed by her city council, well, of course, she can't have a nice word to say about them. It's, all, of course, all Trump's fault. And again, why do I keep banging on about this? Because you need to know the nexus between the crazies on the street, the people in power, and the media who wants to say, despite what you have just seen tonight, you didn't see it at all. This is CNN. That's not what he was espousing. And cheapening what we're seeing now by those aberrant acts is really bad trouble at work. You are ignoring the reality and you are picking on the aberrations for bad reason. And where do we see that? The other side in Portland. This isn't about calling out men and women being sent in. It's about the man sending them in. President Trump is making bad trouble. This stuff is crazy. This is Twitter on television. This is the Internet's toilet door being given full voice. Remember, this is what has been happening in Portland. And according to that bloke, re reinforcing the narrative of the government, reinforcing the narrative of the lunatics on the street, is that when you see this, apparently, you're not supposed to feel anything for the police. Well, we do, because we're normal people, and we thank those who have to stand there and put up with garbage like this. Some of those officers permanently blinded. <sighs> yep. Cheers. Uh, Riptide, rye whiskey, 118 proof, only 30 bucks, and it doesn't give you a headache. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, again, you got a guy from Australia there who sees it. He, he understands it. He, he knows and feels it's coming to his country too um, and sees, sees exactly what we see, right? This, this isn't uh, brain surgery, uh, what we're seeing, that you have two. Did you see? But the, both women looked like they were they were constipated. Did they not? Like. <laughs> this is so terrible he's doing it it's his fault this lady who allowed a group of people to take over her city she allowed a group of people to take over a city that don't live in the city she didn't protect any of the people that voted for her. any of the people that she was supposed to be representing. She did nothing for them, for their businesses, for their building. She told the police to stand down. She told them it's going to be fun. It's going to be a summer of love. It's going to be great. And then she blames Trump. I don't even know which woman. I mean, she may be from Portland. I, you know, I've lost track. <laughs> Sorry. I've lost track of all these morons. They're just all idiots. They really are just idiots. And you got a guy from Australia saying, Hey, it's coming to our country too. Uh, we got liberals in our country that are just stupid. Uh, and moronic and some of the dumbest people that we've ever had on the planet uh, currently. Um, again, you have Americans who love our country, who love our history. Uh, with all of its good and all of its bad, we love our country. Uh, we stand up for the flag. We say, uh, um, uh, in God we trust. Um, we, you know, I don't go to Walmart anymore, uh, but <laughs> I don't even go to Staples anymore. I went to the Staples and the girl there checking out had a BLM shirt on. So I don't go to Staples anymore. Where am I going to get my pencils? I used to go to you know, get my pencils. Um, but uh, there, we just have a bunch of people that just have really lost their ever loving minds and don't see things right that are right in front of them. And then you have to go through a whole thing today in the press briefing and the white just disrespectful shitheads. They're in the uh, press briefing room, just not letting up on this whole white supremacy thing, which has nothing to do with anything. These proud boys, who are the freaking proud boys? That what I saw from the proud go uh, proud boys uh, is that it's uh, run by a black guy. So I, I don't even I don't understand the correlation. It's really kind of crazy. Trump has never caused, not encouraged division, chaos, or violence. It's one hundred percent Democrat. Their media who are at fault, absolutely. 
And I've searched. You, I always ask people, right? Yeah, I have people. I have morons that comment, and I love the morons that comment. I wish I would. I I wasn't going to bring them up and and, and kind of show them, uh, but um, um, I, I put the letter up with um, the Central Intelligence Agency. I think that's who it was who put the letter up about that says they got killery uh, killery. <laughs> <laughs> that Killery, that Killery um, is the one who uh, decided that, you know, what we're going to do. We're going to create this false dossier that says <laughs> that Trump is a Russian spy. We're going to create this thing. Are you all in? Right. Everybody goes in and, and Obama puts his hand on. Biden puts his hand on and they go, yes, let's do it. And they all decide together and they're going to do it. Comey is yesterday um, uh, a te- testifying in front of uh the uh senate i believe the senate uh one of the one of the organizations over there and um or is it congress i don't even know it's people over there in the white house in the in in washington dc and he just got done writing a book about all of this stuff right he's been on cnn and msdnc constantly repeating you know that they has the the goods on donald trump he he he, he's involved uh personally in signing for warrants that allow um, uh, FBI uh, to spy on the campaign and the eventual, uh, uh, you know, the administration. Uh, he it signed the, the things, right? Right. He's involved in one of the biggest investigations that one of the president, the, the nominee for the president, and then the president of the United States is in collusion with Russia. One of the biggest investigations. I, I was a police officer 21 years. I had a couple really big and important investigations. I remember almost everything about those investigations. You're going to tell me that the head of the FBI, who was involved in spying on the presidential nominee and then spying on the president while he was in the White House, that he concocted a, a way of, of, of having him questioned so that they didn't, uh, and that's why I'm talking about Flynn, the General Flynn, the, to, to, to question him by, by, well, we're just going to go over to the White House and we're just going to say, you know, can, can we just come talk to you, right? They, they concocted this whole plan together. And yesterday he's testifying. He goes, I don't remember. <laughs> did you did you do the blah 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 blah? Um, you know what? I don't recall. Did you sign the warrant and then did you read the dossier? I don't remember if I read the dossier. Uh, did you? He remembers nothing. It, it, does he suddenly now Joe Biden? I, does, did he suddenly turn uh, ninety five years old or one hundred eight years old? Whatever how old he is, because I remember Biden said he was in the Senate for a hundred something years. Um, how does he not remember that? How do you not remember a kid where you've written a book? <laughs> you wrote a book on it. You were, you've been speaking on CNN about it. They've questioned you on a daily basis. It's not like it just like you did it on, you know, four years ago and then nothing. You've talked nothing about it over the last four years. That's not what happened. You've been talking about it for four years repeatedly over and over again. You ask me something about dog training. I've been doing dog training for 30 years. Uh, I can remember dog training stuff I did 30 years ago. Why? Because I talk about it all the time. I talked about it with a couple court cases today that I had with people. I'm talking about it all the time, just like he is. I, I don't, I, I remember it because I talk about it all the time. He's done nothing but talk about it. But yesterday when he's questioned by Lindsey Graham and uh, uh, Lee and a couple other people, it's all, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember being in the White House. I don't remember talking. I don't remember reading anything. I don't remember anything about the, you know, those other people. Mike Flynn, who? General, he's general. What? I don't know. I don't remember him. What? You are just freaking nuts. I, I've lost my mind. I'm going to have another drink. So what I, I, I told you, this is called Riptide Rye Whiskey. It's fantastic. This is a different version of the Joe Rogan. Obviously, I didn't get a, like $200 million to do the show. Uh, but he smokes pot. Maybe I need to smoke pot and I'll, I'll get $200 million for my podcast. So um, I'm going to have one more drink here and just like, go through these really quick. Um, I think I already put this one up. Yep, absolutely. Um, people have, believe it's all Trump's fault because that's why they're, again, yeah, ex- absolutely. Like there's nothing you can do with these people. Uh, which I which I understand. I, I've already known that for the last couple of years when I when I bring it up and put comments that there's nothing I'm going to do to change their mind. The reason I do the posts that I do and I and I word them in a way because I know it'll trigger them and cause them to comment. I always look. I, I sometimes I'm disappointed because there's some things I put on there that's really good and they don't comment. Like what? They didn't see it. <laughs> like what happened? I was looking forward to them commenting so that so other people can see how stupid they are because they you put them you give them facts 
And the only thing I get back is you're an asshole. You're a dick. <laughs> you are, uh, you know, you're going to be in trouble when, when, um, uh, when Trump loses. Okay. If he loses, he loses. But I don't know why. I, wh- what? what? What does this have to do with anything? Uh, you have no facts. Like, they never come back with, well, that is not true because of X or because of Z or Y or, or T or LMNOP, right? They never have it. This is why you're wrong, Andy. Never. That has not happened yet. Or I'll say, okay, if that's true, then show me. Show me that. Show me where Trump said that he's for white supremacists. Tell me where he, he loves the KKK. Show me that thing where he said that he loves KKK. Show me that thing. <laughs> well, he said they're all good people. Yes, but how about how expand that out? Let's open that up a little bit where he says, other than <laughs> the white supremacists, uh, there were some good people there, which is true. Right, even at the uh, riot that I was at in in, in your Belinda, there there were a couple uh, people on the BLM side that never really got involved. Like they they went, they thought we're going to go over there, and I'm going to stand. Like there's always those people, right, that stand in the background that they're not fully committed. Like they thought, well, I'm going to go there with my friends, and we're going to hold up signs that say Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, and we're going to look really bad in all of our black stuff. But they they never. They never came forward. They never, they were always 30 feet away. And then when we came forward, they backed up, you know, another 30 feet. They, they probably on some level are kind of okay people. They just, they're kind of, st- they don't know what to do. They want to support their friend. Um, my, I'm going to say my daughter, my oldest daughter, my oldest daughter is the same way. She lives with some girls and I, they're probably watching. I hope they're not, but whatever. Um, and they are, um, you know, they're a little bit left. And so, um, she goes, dad, you know, can you not wear the Trump shirt when you go over to the apartment? Can you not wear your Trump hat? Um, can you not wear your Trump mask? You know, can you not, because, you know, right. And so th- you have those people, right? And she's kind of stuck in a situation where she's living with uh, some people that are a little bit left. And, um, and so again, and just back to Trump's point is that there's fine people kind of like on both sides. Then you have the idiots. Then you have the morons, right? That are, that are just really up front and a pain in the ass. The ones that came there with the, uh, they had like seven or eight hockey sticks all taped together that they hid in the bushes that we discovered. They had, um, other tools and weapons that they were going to use that we discovered. Uh, and then you had the girl to get in the car and then she drove over the four people, right? You have those people. Uh, and, uh, and, and those are the ones that aren't fine. And so you have Trump that says something and he, and he's right. There are okay people on both sides of these things, um, that are still just kind of like, we're not really sure where we are, where we stand. And back to now, I'm going to go all the way back to my original point is that when I have morons that come on and say stupid stuff as comments, regardless of whether, uh, um, they're talking about Trump or COVID-19 and masks and all that kind of stuff is that the, the, the purpose is not to necessarily change that person's mind who wrote the comment because I know they're, they're dumb. Right. And you're never going to break through. You could have a chisel and a hammer and you're going, OK, I'm going to get in there. And it's like granite. Right. You, you're, there's no way you're not going to penetrate. But what happens is, is that there's somebody that is watching that's kind of on the fence, kind of like those people that are standing back 20 feet that are kind of like, you know, I really don't like what they're saying. But, you know, the, you know, those other people have a point. Those people look a lot happier holding the American flags. They look like they're actually having a good time. They actually look like they love their country. They actually look like they're, they're like, they're, they're strong together and they believe in something that's actually pretty good, right? You may have one or two of those people that are going to go, you know what? I'd rather be on that other side. The other side looks a lot more, <laughs> it looks a lot more fun and doesn't look as evil and they're not as, as, as bad of people. That's why I enjoy having some of those people make those comments because you're going to have a couple people that, uh, uh, are again on the fence and really not totally committed one way or another. And, and hopefully, uh, through some of the stuff that we do here, uh, that will affect some of those people that are on the fence. All right. So sorry. Um, everybody's like, uh, Comey is guilty of treason. Absolutely. Did I already put that up? I probably did. All right. One more shot to all of you. I love you guys. God bless you guys. Um, uh, make sure and watch, you know, we got some really good stuff. Oh, that, that's really actually what I want to say. I want to promote, uh, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills Church. Calvary Chapel Chino Hills Church. Um, and let me see if I can bring their URL, URL up here as I'm talking. Um, we have some really cool stuff coming up in our church uh, that you're going to want to pay attention to. Uh, we have some great speakers. And right now, I'm not going to be able to think of all the speakers. Um, but uh, maybe Amy uh, knows more. Um, but uh, uh, over the oh, in October... The, I guess is what this is kind of something that they've done over uh, the several years that they've been around. They've been around for 30 years, but during the presidential or during the November um, elections, they 
uh, put together programs that um, speak to things that we need to know as Americans about what to vote on. And especially if you are a conservative or a Christian, that we have a number of speakers that will be uh, attending the church. And I think there's a couple big events with, um, you know, Charlie Kirk, um, somebody probably from Prager U, and a bunch of other people. Um, uh, I know that there's people watching tonight who have watched uh, last night's service. So watch last night's service. And just if you want to just watch the beginning. The entire service is fantastic, by the way. And you can probably see me in the front row. I'm right there in the front row in a red shirt that says USA. Um, but uh, in the beginning, if you just want to know what's happening, he, he's going to speak about some of those things. But the, I put the URL for the church there. Follow the church. Um, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel or subscribe and, and follow them on Facebook because the events they have coming up, what he spoke about last night, about what they have coming up is going to be worth watching, uh, especially if you want to make some uh, uh, some differences in our country and uh, continue on this path of bringing back um, the love for America and our, our, our love for our history and the love of who we are as uh, Americans, that we are the best country on the planet, that we are not a racist country, uh, that we give more than any other country. We help other countries when they're in need, no matter whether they're an, our enemy or not. We send relief to even countries that are have been our enemies over the years uh, because it's, we're not often at war with the people. We're often at war with the, the people that are in charge of their government. And so we got to be very careful that we understand that, that we, uh, you know, there's, uh, you know, although China is not our friend, the, the, the people in China aren't necessarily our enemy, right? Same thing with Iran. Iran, a horrible regime that's in charge of Iran. But the, a lot of the people in Iran love us in America, and they would come here if they could without being killed, right? Uh, we have a lot of Christians in Iran that will can never say that they're Christians in these countries or else they'll be killed. And so you got to understand that, that we're not at war with the people of these different countries. And we will help them if there's a, a hurricane or I don't know what do they have over there. They don't have hurricanes. They have what is it called? It's called something else. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, well, they have earthquakes, right? They have earthquakes. They have tsunamis and some of that. Not Iran, probably, but other countries, they have tsunamis. Um, what are they called? Not hurricanes, but they called cyclones. Typhoons, typhoons, right? So some of these other countries, they have typhoons. I don't know why there's two different names for the kind of the same thing. Why is there two? Anybody know? Uh, Amy, look it up. Why is why in some areas of the world is it called a hurricane? In other areas of the world, it's called a typhoon. I don't understand that. I don't know why. That's not that's not my thing. Ask me about, about dog training. I know about dog training. Um, but we are one of the few countries that go out there. We will help anybody. We don't care how mean you've been to us because it's about the people that live in the country, not about the regimes that are in charge. Some of the regimes won't let us in, like North Korea. Like, would they let us come in and help their country? Probably not. But we would come and help their people if we could go in there and help their people. If they needed some help, if they needed food, water, um, first aid, if they needed some type of recovery, we would be there as a country. That's who we are. And for, for people to tell us that we are a racist, miserable, horrible country, they're just absolutely wrong. Just absolutely wrong. So, um, I'm not a mute. <laughs> yeah, but you, what kind of producer are you, Amy? <laughs> I don't know why there's a difference. There is a difference. I, I've heard that. And I can see the numbers have dropped because I've gone to a whole other place here that just doesn't, uh, isn't interesting. All right, my friends. Um, again, I love you guys so much and appreciate you. Uh, God bless you. And I will see you on the next one. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye.